Wow, that's such a jazzy intro. <laughs> I did forget to tell you, you are expected to dance to it. We can restart that oh, if you want. Oh my gosh. You know what? Table me for next time. I will prepare a dance. Well, what you can do is when we finish, just do, we'll play it again after the stream is over. You dance to it, and I'll just kind of stitch that in in post. Great, great. Love post. Post always saves it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, uh, I hear that a lot from people that are like into improv is that they love like post and like that's where the magic happens. The magic, yeah. Yeah, and all the, t in the after the show and you're like, oh man, I could have said that and I could have said that, but it mm -hmm. doesn't matter now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I yeah. do that with, I do that with lots of arguments with my family, so. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually, it's really fitting that you're our guest this week because I totally prepared for next week's guest or was totally ready for next week's guest and... Um, Just ask the same questions. They're, they're probably good questions. Okay. Um, yeah, and that's, you're right. I guess it's like, it's but improvised. That's great. Perfect. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so I can just like improvise this. I, yeah, no, I do, I... I do like to stick to a script though, so I, maybe I will just ask the same questions. Um, how did you get into motivational speaking? <laughs> well, if you, if by motivational speaking, I mean, I guess there's motivational speaking parts of improv if you choose to improvise those. Um, yeah, I, I got into improv like 10 years ago and I thought that I was going into a, like a music jam and it turns out it was actually a musical improv jam, but my friend left out the word improv. So I I was terrified. I was like, I didn't come here to do improv. I'm not interested in improv. Um, and then 10 years later, I'm still I'm still involved in that same that same thing. So uh, I I found it along the way, obviously. But yeah. What so what instrument did you go in? Like, were you like planning to like go in and or what what instrument do you play? I guess first of all. Yeah, so I mean, I, I went in thinking it was music, so I played the instrument of my voice, I guess. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, and then um, like sort of like a singing a singing jam, I guess, because um, oh. it was like musical based. Like I guess I should clarify that, like musical theater kind of based. So I knew it was theater theatery, but um, yeah, the improv was like a secondary element to it. Mm -hmm. So you you're like first improv gig was like extra improv because you didn't go in prepared at all. You didn't even know. Totally. Were, and I wasn't one of those. Meta improv. Yeah. And it wasn't one of those people that did improv in high school, you know, like people do improv in high school and stuff, but I was not that person. So I was like, oh my goodness, here we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it seems to have worked out for I, I, you. I missed the part where that led to motivational speaking. Yeah. I know. Uh, well, you know, most motivational speaking's made up, right? Is that how that works? People just go I out there. I think so. And... I don't think motivational speakers have ever used scripts. It's true. <laughs> They're just like, be yourself, do good things, don't let people bring you down. So, go yeah. after your dreams. <laughs> yeah. Pay me money. Yeah. Yeah, I I feel like incredibly jazzed already. Like I could take on the world as it is. Yeah. Right. Motivational peaking. I like that. More like motivational peaking. I'm peaking <laughs> in my motivational career as we speak. That was all I had. It's it's probably best you don't acknowledge those jokes because it will only encourage her further. Oh, funny. I love them. I've been loving them. Okay, I'll keep them to myself. Paige's jokes well, are the best part of the show. Please, please acknowledge them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I do like I do I do want Paige to be happy, but also uh, Nicole is in charge of the show, and he she has decided we're being mean to Paige, so I just we have to follow along, right? I don't actually know where that came from, and I don't know if I'm on board. Why do you think I'm being mean to Paige? Oh, because oh, because you weren't giving her time to, to to get the cues ready. She's got to like she's got to take those big data punch cards with the next theme song on them. And like load them up into the big reader and like mm -hmm. turn the big crank to get them like locked into place. And you know, you have to make sure that like the machine is all lubed up. It's very complicated. Mm -hmm. But you know, this is the kind of audio video equipment you get on Kijiji, right? It's it's what it is. Yeah. It'd be really nice if like one day someone invented something where you could like just at the click of a button just have your whole show just like run itself. But anyways. <laughs> We can only dream. 
Mm-hmm. Dare to dream, dare to dream. It's another motivational quote. Dare mm-hmm. to dream. That's good. That's good. Can we? I don't have a notepad. Um, can you just? Yeah. Can you give me that notepad that's very important to you? And I'll just. Or are you gonna take notes for me? No, no, no. Okay. Well, I need it. <laughs> All right. He's like, don't take my notepad. Can uh, I, I mean, the secretary there as well. Uh, yeah, you can, you can have your own. One. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so I, let's get. Oh, this one's full though. I filled it with memories, Ian. Wow, that's an impressive. I think that's a really cool thing when you like fill a notebook up. Like, how satisfying is that? Like, mm, it, yeah, right? that was like the year of my life where I journaled, and then then I became cynical and awful again. Is that the notebook no. that I wrote porn in last time? Um, no, this is the notebook you wrote porn in. Uh, oh, that's what I was asking. I think I, actually, I think that would be a great first exercise. So, um, because obviously the reason we brought you here, Katie, is to teach us improv. Because uh, as anyone who has watched us before knows, we need to learn. <laughs> and uh, I, I mean, if if you have some particular like exercises or kind of instructional stuff you want to run us through like you know i'm mr hands off the wheel but uh i think that could be a good place to start is like what what if we kind of improvise some some fantasy ogre porn because that's kind of already our wheelhouse ogre porn yeah okay like (laughs) o-g-r-e just clarifying um it's it's just sort of uh it's one of those things that developed organically um but is basically at this point i would call it the main theme of the show amazing like is that a good place to start or is that too advanced you know i feel like that's pretty advanced i feel like like improvised porn is its own advanced niche no its own advanced level Mm mm-hmm yeah i mean now i'm wondering like is like in the porn industry like do they have like people who stick to a script versus people that kind of like ad lib and riff like is that like a kind of schism that exists or just different different uh like approaches yeah actually that's like i am that's an interesting question yeah do they let people go off script or is it like I don't know a lot about it, but I feel like I'd imagine there's some loose script. (laughs) Loose what? Like script? (laughs) Oh, yeah. It's definitely that. Well, like, like, do they have, like, are there method porn actors who, like, insist on being a pool boy for the entire shoot? (laughs) Oh, this is actually such an amazing premise for a sketch. Like, Honestly, yeah. See, look at this. Yeah, it's like you're improvising with it. You're riffing on it. But what a fun, Wait, what a funny sketch if it was like, yeah, the pool boy who was just like really, really method, really serious. Are you, like, are, you saying we should, are you saying we should script it or we should just improvise it? You can improvise it. I'm just saying it. It would turn into a good sketch, a good mm-hmm. premise. We call it a premise. It's a good, it's a good comedy premise. Yeah. yeah. Halfway halfway through, he just like starts breaking down into tears and talking about how he got this job to support his family because his father has cancer. Totally, yeah. <laughs> Wait, is that the pool boy saying that or the porn actor saying that? That's the porn actor as the pool boy. Okay. Yes. So the character took that job to support his uh his father with cancer. Mm-hmm. Porn actor, I presume, took the job to like feed his coke habit or whatever. Like, maybe he used to be, like, a Shakespearean actor, but there was, like, some sort of mix-up, and he got, like, falsely accused and sent out of, like, Stratford, you know? Like, Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Has anyone made porn that's, like, strictly limited to, like, iambic pentameter? Like, Paige, can you look that up? (laughs) This could be a good niche to get into. Mm -hmm. More like iambic porn pentameter. Pentameter, nice. Thank you. Mm-hmm. More mm-hmm. like iambic pen tap it her. Good effort. Good effort. <laughs> I liked Nicole's better, but that was good effort, Tilly. That was a good effort. Right. <laughs> or iambic men tameter, which is like five dudes at once. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but like in Shakespeare and text. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Neat. So can you can you kind of like guide us through like let let's let's work on a scene together. Um do we do we have enough performers? Do we need one more performer? Sure. I mean we we can you mean are you two gonna do it or do it like us three, all three? Uh, I don't know. I'm just staring at our GM and seeing if he's going to scribble notes or if he wants to do bits. Oh, I want to do bits. Okay. Oh, he wants to do bits. Well, then let's bring out Mr. Schlafenschwanz himself, Ian. Hey everybody! It's me, Ian, the GM. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Holy moly! Holy okay. moly, indeed. Man, I was just chomping at the bit to be the pool boy, so mm -hmm. I hope that spot's still open. I don't think you're supposed to chomp. I think you should use like more of your tongue than your teeth. But oh, I, uh, <laughs> sorry I like for cleaning the pool. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh. oh no, I'm a filter feeder. I just oh swim. Ian, he's not there to clean the pool. No. <laughs> <laughs> pond scum out of the pool. Nicole, have I told pond you about the teeth lady? Um, have we have we gone over that story? The what lady? The teeth lady. Nope. Um, you know the you lady with meet the her. You should give her that advice. Uh, I don't want to get I don't want to get off on a tangent. Um. Suffice to say, she insisted that teeth was actually hot. But let's move on. Isn't that isn't that a bit? There's a comedy bit about that about how that's clearly not what. Anyways, whatever, doesn't matter. That's unfortunate. Sorry about your luck. <laughs> how dry do you want it? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's, right. that's the one. Oh, and speaking yeah. of wetness, this is an, this is another thing we have in our our sort of toolbox, Katie. Is that uh, Ian's very good at like ASMR and sound effects. I don't know if oh, you wanted well. to do that. Yeah, you I were can. doing so good at it earlier. I really felt like I was just like inside of like a mouth. <laughs> I mean, I don't have my gum, so it's not as powerful, but do you need some gum? Yeah, if you give me some gum, that'd be great. All this right, cover for me. Special skill. No, thank you. Okay, no, and now I'm doing yeah. it right now. <laughs> <laughs> It's really not the same without the gum. I know, because I can do like mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I hope everyone hated that. <laughs> yeah. I didn't. I didn't like it, but I appreciate that you can do it. That's yeah. good. No, thank you. Because you have a talent. Yeah. 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 It's a everyone's good isolated a part that I can like clip it, and maybe just loop it. Yeah. And maybe I'll put that under the audio of Nicole reading her ogre porn. <laughs> 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 How's mine? <laughs> I mean, mine's do better. We, right? Do we have to compare the two? Is that like the? Yeah, like it's hard, it's hard I, I feel like that was a missed opportunity during our sound check. Like we should have all just done the mouth sounds and seen kind of <laughs> whose was best. But what better time than right now? Yeah, fair. Do we should we go one at a time or all at once? Why not both? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Paige, I'm ready. First. I'm ready. Are we going for it? Are we doing this? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've already done mine, so I want to. Yeah, just I've done mine the... too. So Nicole, why don't you just do yours, and we'll layer them all together in post. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, that's really good. <laughs> that's really good. Well, she's got Practice a that one. Mic. She fancies herself some kind of podcaster, so it's picking up everything. Damn, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. I also have this specialty sound. I learned this in junior high. Oh, yeah. I like that one, too. That's a bonus one for you guys. That's a great sound effect. Yeah. I used to be able to do it, but I'm smiling too much. It's really hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, cool. can we work some sound effects into the pool boy scene? I don't know. Are, are we adding too much here, Katie? <laughs> well, I mean, I feel like uh, you, you should, you like be inspired by the the ability to have sound effects. There's actually a whole yeah. improv game called Sound Effects where mm -hmm. um, you see the action, right? And somebody on the side does all of the, 
the sound effects for what they're what they're doing. So that could also be a spin-off. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. So here's, I, the, here's the thing about um, this this course you're teaching right now, uh, Katie, is you need like a very heavy hand when dealing with us because we we tend to run roughshod over each other and our guests. So if you have an idea, you need to like emphatically tell us we're doing it and like maybe just like wag your finger. <laughs> you do you want to do an improv scene? Is that what you want? I, th I think that I think that's going to be a good way for us to learn. Okay, so how would I how would I start you off with something helpful at, to set up the scene helpful and then see we could see where it goes. You hands off the wheel. Okay. So the boss. So in improv, we want to set up some of the basic like who, what, where, if we can from the top. So for example, like walking on stage and being like I have a thing for you. And the other character being like, cool, that's awesome. Um, is kind of a and waste this is of two lines. Yeah, yeah. But even okay. that, right? It, it'd be like a bit of a waste, right? Because it's like, we don't know who the characters are, what the gift is or where they are, anything like that. So um, in improv, we have an exercise where we do try to do the three W's. So who we are, where we are and what we're doing in the first few lines of the scene. So we can really set up the premise and then we're all on the same page. So I think that's a great place to start um, if we all try to build that and then, yeah, yeah, see what happens. I'm into it. Do you want me to uh, to coach from the side? Like, are you three gonna gonna roll with this scene? Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah that's amazing. Yeah, okay, so it's just okay. like literally anything. I'm just gonna come in with, one of us yeah. will come in with with who, either who you are, what you're doing, where you are. So an example might be like, uh, hey, Steve, uh, it's been a while since you've been to the dentist. And you're like, oh, yeah, hey, doctor, you know, so-and-so, right? So then immediately we know, like, you're at the dentist, you have your dentist, you have Steve, you know what I mean? Just, like, detail, I guess. Right. Yeah. Well, I think Nicole sounds ready to start. Totally. Um... We're doing, can, can, can you like, I need a little coaching for this. What do, what am I, yeah. how do I start? Like I just. So usually we start with a suggestion. So, I mean, we've kind of, it's kind of like, we've maybe pre, do we want to do something fresh? Like we predetermined the pool boy thing. Mm -hmm. Do you want a fresh suggestion or, or we can take that as our suggestion? What do you think? I think we should take suggestions from the audience. Uh, which is currently largely Paige. Great. So maybe you can, you can type out her suggestion for, uh, she wants the scene to be less than three minutes. That That's reasonable. <laughs> yeah, and like, let's ask her for something specific so she's not lost. Like, right. do we want to ask her for like, and you can ask anything, but it just has to be specific, like for an object or a location or something like that she can kind of latch onto. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, if, Paige, if you just want to give us, like, any uh, swear word in the Kyrgyz language, that would be good. Poor Paige. Now your audience is like, no, we're not playing. <laughs> All right. Paige, Paige, why don't you give uh, why don't you give a location? A location's helpful. That's already one of our three Ws. If you, if you can think of one. Google headquarters, amazing. Okay, yeah. So there, that's that's great. So, and all right, let's let's not feel lots of pressure. Nicole, don't feel pressure to like get everything out on this perfect first line. But now we know where we are, so you can, yeah, resp just resp say yes to that. Okay. Um, do I so like do I should I like set the scene? Should I, do I just like talk to someone and like hope they respond? Like yes. Yeah, yeah. So you can um, you can start by addressing another character in the in the scene if you want. Um, yep. And sometimes it helps too, Nicole, if you go on with a, a thought of like maybe who you are in Google Headquarters. So what's a character you might find in Google Headquarters? Just loosely. Okay. Got it. Okay. Yeah. 
<sighs> hey, Randy, how's your day so far? Hey. Yep, doing doing pretty good. Just mopping up the floors here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's uh, I'm yeah. They're looking pretty, you, looking pretty uh, shiny. Oh, so, sorry, I totally interrupted <laughs> you. <laughs> Okay. Rude Randy, that's what they call me. Sorry about that. <laughs> go on, go on ahead and speak your mind. Oh no, I was just saying, floors look really shiny. Um, you're doing you're doing a great job. It seems seems like you're having a good day. Oh well, thank you kindly. That's very nice of you. But it almost seemed like you wanted to say more. You know, me just being the lonely lowly janitor that I am, I keep secrets good. You know. I just. Uh... To be honest, I'm having a real rough day. I, uh, as you know, it's my job to review, you know, the what comes up on Google search and nice, yay. Someone, uh, I found a lot of people have been searching Sonic lately, and it's my job to figure out what happens when how to turn what at what level you turn on safe search, and uh, seen some really problematic things, and it's kind of ruined my day. I just never thought I would see Knuckles like that and uh, <laughs> being a big Sega fan, it's really how deep he was, I bet. <laughs> it's hasn't hasn't been a good time. So. Well, that's a lot of weight to have on your shoulders. Randy. Uh, oh Randy. Oh one second. Um, Randy. Yeah, what what is it, Rand- Margarine? Ra- Randy <laughs> Are you in the same place you were mopping when I came in here an hour ago? Oh, I gotta go. <laughs> Seems I've overstayed my welcome. Randy, I'm... are you trying to get the staff to divulge secrets again? No, no, of course not. I'm just here to clean. Look how clean this patch of floor is. I know I take my time, but I do good work. I hope we don't need to have another sit down in the Lego room. No, Marjorie, that won't be necessary. <laughs> You know we, I don't we, like to use the Lego room. Uh, okay. Look. We cut to a scene oh. where Randy is uh, by himself in like the custodian's basement, and he confesses his plot where he is spying and and getting secrets and why he's doing that. Well, s- s- scribbling furiously in a journal, like, turning on cameras and stuff like that. Things things have been pretty good here. The infiltration has been. Exceptionally good. No one suspects anything except for Marjorie. Marjorie, the other janitor <laughs> who cleans the second floor. I, I don't know what it is about this this Marjorie, but she just seems to know that I'm not a real janitor. Maybe it's the way I wax or the way I uh, <laughs> dump out the trash bins. It doesn't have that artisanal flair that janitors are so famous for. Oh, uh, uh, I gotta go. I'm talking to myself. Randy. Ah, uh, yes, Marjorie. Randy, are you in there? Yes, Marjorie. Okay. Why is the door locked? Be- because it's I'm on my break, Marjorie. God. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> well, okay, but I, I need some I need some uh, a generic cleaning product. Let me just let me just uh open the. T- Okay. I can't get the door open, <laughs> and, uh, I shut. I like shut down my web camera, and we go back to the original scene from upstairs. And I like squinted her really hard. Now, Randy, yeah. do you mean to tell me that you're not just here? You're not just a friendly janitor with an open ear here to help me bear my soul? No, no, that's exactly what I'm saying. I am. I'm. Just a humble janitor, a real authentic janitor, doing all sort of janitorial processes here at Google HQ. You know, uh, the more the more I listen, the more this just doesn't end up. Like, why do you and Marjorie have the exact same accent <laughs> for like no reason? Because we grew well, up on the same I, block. <laughs> I must I must ask you, what was your name again, Miss? <laughs> oh yeah. I'm sorry. I, I mean, I know. People here. Google is a very large company. What is your name? Uh, my name is actually Marie Google. I'm the daughter <laughs> of the Googles, and uh, I'm actually doing an undercover boss episode. So I'm a little curious to know what's going on between you two here. You seem to have some beef. 
Well, the, the, the undercover boss thing explains a lot, Marini, as I was wondering why you do not have an accent. As, as we all know, which city and which state in the southern United States we are in. And you, you, you have a rather Canadian affect to you, and I was very curious about this. But yeah. first of all, I must say that I am, I am just shocked that you would deceive us in such a way. Pretending to be <laughs> someone that you are not, shame on you. Yes, I agree, Randy. You know, you may not be so bad after all. <laughs> well, maybe we can get along, Mar Margarine. Sorry, I just called you Margarine. Maybe, maybe we can uh, work work something out between us. The first floor and the second floor don't help have to be a war. You called me by her name. Mar Sorry, what? <laughs> you called me Marine. You've been spending a lot of time talking to Marine, haven't you? Look, Marie's on the third floor. And what I'm happened on the first. to us, Why? Randy? I just, <laughs> look, I know we were we used to be passionate lovers. What? what? I just meant we used to clean very effectively. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right, sorry, that's me and Marine. I'm so confused. No, oh, no, say yes to him. You're with and that in your own time. But say yes you're... to him, Kelly. That was a great offer. Say yes. Say what? yes. Passionate lovers. Oh, we're my dear lovers. heavens. It is such a humid day. I forgot that we were lovers. Oh, Randy, I must apologize. Of course, how could I forget those long nights, those even longer mornings, and the endless sounds of this? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Randy. Oh. Look, I, I feel so so ashamed, Randy. Why why did you feel the need to to lie when I did not believe you? Why did you say we were not lovers when you knew we were? What? Please don't feel like you need to hide your love from me just because I'm the boss. Hey, I mean, turn into a thing against old Randy. I, I'm, I'm proud to be a lover of of janitors of the first floor, second floor, and third floor. <laughs> Oops, oh no! Did oh, I no. say that out loud? <laughs> oh shit! But it doesn't matter anyways because our time is over, Marjorie. That was many, many moons ago in the in the hot, hot. I'm not going to say exactly which state, but we all know which one it is. Absolutely. We're very <laughs> proud of our state. That's right. And don't and... just behind us, Marjorie. You, you need to move on. You, stop, you gotta stop harassing me here at work. Has it really been that many moons? It's been 42 years. <laughs> How many moons is that? I don't understand the metric system. Uh, it's a... Uh, I'm just a janitor. And scene! I feel like we're over a three minute tape okay. page. Right. Did we did we go over? Yeah, I wasn't watching the timer. Hmm. Oh, there was a timer? Well, I mean I we, we could have checked the, I the just overall got so, time so and seen what I got so at. enthralled by our multiple plot line plot lines. But good work. I feel like we uh like Nicole just like and in, like giving giving backstory like being like this is who i am and this is what i'm doing so good because then we actually can play along it's surprising mm -hmm. how many scenes go on and on without like someone's name or like what they're doing like and we don't mm -hmm. care as an audience we're like whatever we don't care that you're cutting a like dog's hair we don't know who you are or what you're doing so yeah you did so good in that but also, I fucked up bad, as you pointed out. You didn't fuck up. What do you mean? Oh, I, I, I didn't yes answer him. I said no, and I, I, and now I have to, now I have to suffer an improv punishment, don't I? Oh, I want to get I into mean, the stick. Oh my goodness! Yeah, that's the old school improv. That's the, <laughs> the nineteen thirties improv punishment. Now you just, uh, you just say yes in the scene, and you're good. Mm. I'm just noticing for the first time that your um, bookshelf looks color coordinated. Is that a thing? Oh, God, that's so satisfying. It is. Oh, it is color blocked. I, yeah. I realize that is the most frustrating organizational system if you have like a ton of books, but I have like not that many on the shelf. So, yeah, they're color blocked. That's, um, yeah, that's wonderful. I think libraries should do that more. Yeah. color coded books yeah well no instead of like by topic yeah by i know i just wanted a real blue book 
Yeah, right. I posted it once and they're just like some angry people had a lot of feelings about it because they're like, I'd never be able to find my books. And I'm like, yeah, it's definitely not something you do with like a ton of books because yeah, then you're like, was that book yellow? Like, I hope I remember. (laughs) I feel like if you've read the book, you know what color the cover is. True. That's true. You're right. If they're your own. Your red, your like red books bookshelf could be that, but true. Yeah, that's a good call. Hmm. Cool. Yeah, I library love it. That's very satisfying from my point of view. <laughs> Thank you. Three decimals. Was it also good? Um, since you said it was good, Katie, was it also good the way uh, Ian and I completely cut Nicole out of the scene and then just stopped engaging with her? Mm-hmm. That felt that felt right. It felt natural. <laughs> I didn't feel like did that. That's funny. You you did you feel that in the scene where you like oh oh. I feel Me? like we uh we yeah. Oh, I definitely like to be honest. That was kind of my ploy going in. <clears throat> is I was like, because I'm totally afraid of improv. It's like my worst nightmare. Um, and so going in, I was like, maybe there's a way that I can get these two to like just talk to each other. Um, but then I got real excited about my character and I was like, damn it. I have, there's so much I could do with this. Yeah. I, I feel like it's easy to like something we did, which everybody does. So this is not a, don't feel bad. It's like, I, it's like always the thing is like everyone kind of offers a new plot point And like, so then it kind of, you know what I mean? It's like, we're, there's multiple things going on. And so it's hard, it's harder to loop those around. But I trust mm-hmm. that, like, had we gone longer, that, like, we, you know, Ian and Kelly, your characters could have looped back to Nicole or, like, Nicole, if it was long form, right, you could come back in. And so it'd be a good character setup that we would leave for a bit and then we could come back to. You. But, of course, in short form, it's kind of, like, lots of moving parts are hard to hard to wrangle. But I didn't realize it was your worst fear. You did so awesome. I feel, like, mean now. I'm, like, I was just, like, okay, Nicole, just think of something. You did so good. Thanks. Um, my trick for doing improv is to be at least one drink deep when it happens. So nice. Well, I, I just think personally that that's inappropriate. <laughs> <clears throat> Clearly. You should be at least three drinks deep, Nicole, before you start. And you never know when improv is going to happen. So I just stay. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> one drink deep all day. Oh my gosh. For that impromptu uh, improv circle that'll bust out yeah, in the exactly. park. You're like, I'm ready for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they just hide in bushes and yeah. stuff like that. Well, that's what I told the cops and they pulled me over. Like, how many drinks have you had? I'm like, do you understand how improvised driving is? Like, there's some guidelines, but I don't know what anyone around me is going to do. You always have to be ready to react. Mm-hmm. And that's why I have all the empties. And then, oh my gosh. No. I've been only drinking one drink all day, officer. I can only do improv on one drink deep. So yeah. just make sure I re up here and there and you know yeah one drink it's the 40 taped to my hand yeah that's right <laughs> only one because i'm driving and i do need to steer you just have a breathalyzer to like keep yourself it's like you know how diabetics like check their blood sugar like yeah, regularly throughout yeah. the day you just have a breathalyzer to make sure that you're at like the perfect amount of drunk all day so it's like it's still legal to drive but and like you could do improv but like yeah that's what yeah. car breathalyzers are for isn't it so you can always kind of maintain <laughs> your minimum like sober enough to drive, but drunk enough to take on an improv troupe. That's, that's right. That's the ideal. <laughs> zone. That's a good yeah. bracket. Yeah, mm. exactly. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm learning I'm... so much improv already. It's amazing. Mm. <laughs> I need to drink more, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> I, Wait, I, I, I didn't. I, I didn't offer that tip for the record. Let it be known. <laughs> yeah, that was not my know, advice. <laughs> improv yeah. coach Katie. Um, <laughs> recommend. <laughs> Noted. Recommend. <laughs> the sentiments are entirely false well that's a fair point i mean you are the teacher here so maybe you could work us through your um your general regimen of like alcohol pharmaceuticals uh like other illicit substances like what what do you you use to get in that sweet spot oh hey you know what the only illicit substance you need is your own adrenaline and an open heart and an open mind, Kelly. All pure natural stuff. <laughs> cool. Where do we buy that? <laughs> yeah, like do I kind of have to like sweat out my own adrenaline and then kind of like 
do like a weird like reduction on it and then like snort it or like how do i how do i it how do always, i get jacked up in my own adrenaline it always flows within you flows within you this is my motivational speaking coming background Recall. right right i know i understand <laughs> well that's a good that's that's a good line of, oh that's such a good sound all right. Oh. Um, let's briefly mute ourselves and uh, okay. let's well, go uh, time for intermission anyways. So, oh, there's not really a fire, right? <laughs> we have um, probably not. <laughs> okay. just say, elegance a shrug. Hmm. Huh. Well. The bodies have been muted. All right. Okay. So, Katie, I do have a question for you that I've been meaning to ask. Yeah. Have you, have you seen this like meme coming up? In like, I've seen it a couple times now, where it's been like this like joke about how improv groups are like kind of culty, or like there's like <laughs> comparison between like improv and cults. Have you? Seen I this? haven't seen it, but that's hilarious. I'll have to look it up. Is it like general meme meme that's going around? Is it like a specific uh, one or just like no, it's not like a it's not like a like a meme like an internet meme, but it's like it's just been like a joke that's come up a few times. Um there's been like um so do, do you watch have you watched any Bojack Horseman? I have, yes. I'm not like super versed, but I know what it is. Yeah, yeah. Okay. There's an episode where one of the characters gets into an improv group, but they're like very clearly very clearly the improv group is like a metaphor for Scientology. Oh my God. <laughs> and so it's like, it's very funny. It's really well done. Um, but there's like a, uh, yeah, there's a whole episode about it and it's like very good. And then there's like, I've just heard like various things about like specifically improv groups, like, like big improv groups. There's, so I, we listen to, I listen to this podcast called behind the bastards and he's like talking about, um, they talk about cults quite a bit and the one care the uh, comedian he had on to interview while he was like talking about these cults was like basically comparing it to her improv group and being like these are some similarities that i see between the two and like <laughs> is there like that's funny i love that i need to like look that up that's so good i can send you yeah i'll send you all the episodes and stuff but yeah it's do you have any like is there like anything that like would stand out to you as like are there any like weird rituals or like <laughs> I mean, I think like definitely you could make like if an outside eye came in and like saw it going down that it might look actually pretty funny because like if you didn't know anything about it because like there's lots of games that I guess would kind of be from the outside I would be like ritual like could look ritualistic right or could look really weird um, and then just obviously like a bunch of theater or like artists in a room like that's already like a whole thing right mm -hmm. like all that energy so yeah, like we play lots of teams like Woosh where we pass the energy and stuff. So you could totally, you could totally like, um, yeah, that'd be such a funny joke. Like there'd be so much to support it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All the like warm up games. I also just I found one that was like future. Do you watch Futurama? I again, I've seen if you're like sit kind of like you. I've seen a few, but. It just says not sure if improv is a cult or a pyramid scheme. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one too interesting nice. yeah mm -hmm. yeah i uh yeah i just thought it was kind of funny and it's like they were saying yeah. specifically like he says he's like you know just because things have things in common with cults doesn't mean that they're like a cult or that they're bad it's just like because there's like there's lots of things that people get involved with that are yeah like, have all these things where it's like people are really bonding like there's like one person totally. that like, they're following there's like all these things yeah. it's like doesn't mean that it's like a cult or dangerous. It's only like a cult if it's like exploiting people or like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I feel like, um, I feel like too, it's like, yeah, definitely improv gets like inside jokey, which is like kind of culty, I guess, or whatever, you know, like people start getting like their inside jokes and then, yeah. Yeah, mm. that's funny. Okay. What's your favorite game? <laughs> My favorite game, improv game? Yeah. Oh. Um, oh my goodness. Like a short or, form, short form game? Or one, one that you just enjoy in general. Ooh, you're kind of echoey, Ian. Am I now? Yes. 
sounds like maybe you're coming through on two different mics or am i echoing yes okay we're gonna go back to silence minds (laughs) no you know what no that's it that's better yeah i I muted the wrong yeah yeah you look you sound great um yeah i unmuted the ian person so we were getting the audio it doesn't matter uh now that we've completely killed the flow of the great conversation you were having um I guess we could give a fire alarm update, which is... Please do. (laughs) Are you okay? Uh, Is the house on fire? Well, I have this very aggressive fire alarm, as you know, um, and it goes up through the whole house. And so my landlords live upstairs. And this has happened before where sometimes, like, they'll be like, oh, yeah, sorry. We'd, like, you know, didn't turn the range fan on cooking kind of thing. Uh, And, you know, so my alarm goes off if they you know, burn something. Uh, but during that commotion, I feel like you heard this as well. Yeah. The the little, cause, so, yeah. So on. this, this, the smoke detector in general will say like fire. Well, it says in two languages, it goes fire foot, but it like the robot voice doesn't know how to pronounce foot. So it goes like fire foo. And that's very confusing. And that's normally what the robot voice says. But today, it seemed to be saying carbon monoxide, which made me concerned that it was something else. But then, having texted my landlords, they said, oh, we just, you know, burned something, forgot to turn the the range hood on. So it's probably that. But Mm. it could be that and carbon monoxide. So I I feel worried about this. (laughs) Well, I feel good because we're on camera. Yeah, so if you guys if pass, out, pass out, I have your you address. We'll call, call 911. Like it's, yeah. it's a foolproof situation, I think. Like there's, there's no, it's basically no risk. Mm-hmm. I know it's cold too, but you could also crack a window. But it, well, it's not smoky down here because what I'm thinking, like is, for the carbon monoxide, though, right? Like if you have a window well, open. When I'm, here's my thought process: is if we're not passed out yet, maybe it's just enough carbon monoxide to make us loopy. Which could be good for improv because we'll get kind of like loose and comfortable, right? Mm-hmm. It's it's like adding three more beers like that. We no, had- I don't I, condone the the carbon monoxide as a tool for improv. Hmm. I work with scientists and I'm like dating a scientist, and I like that sounds like sound science to me, and I totally approve of this plan. Thank you, Nicole. I appreciate your positivity. You should be a motivational speaker. Hmm. Same. Yeah, don't don't let Katie and Paige stop you from achieving your dreams. Like you just yeah. you inhale all of the carbon carbon monoxide that you want. Yeah, and I feel like I've inhaled just enough to do another scene. <laughs> well, I right. know what Katie's favorite game is. First. Sorry, no, yeah, finish what you were saying. Like I, I'm just gonna mute myself again. No, no, it's okay. I can't mute myself without muting you. I'm just gonna stand over here and open the window. Because that's yes. actually a good idea. Yes, thank you. It makes me feel better. I'm like, yes. Um, yeah, I my favorite game is um, I like sounds like a song. So at any time in the scene, someone can be like, sounds like a song, and you have to break out into song. I really like that one. And I also like a good actor's nightmare if it goes well. Sometimes it, it doesn't, but when it does, it's so satisfying. So um you basically get somebody's phone um, and you um, can text or like read their text chain. And what happens is the person in the scene. So if I'm the improviser in the scene, um, my other improviser has the phone and that's the next line they have to say, like this text thread, basically. So it kind of goes, it, it gets kind of pigeonholed into that, but it's always really, really great because it involves the audience. Um, and it's really fun to play within that and stuff. And like, if you get someone's like juicy text thread or like, or just like ridiculous text thread, yeah. um, it, it's it's great. So actually maybe that one's like one of my favorites. I think the short form when you can like fully involve the audience in like more than just a suggestion, I really love that. Cause it's like total connection with them. And then um, we get to like play with them kind of and they're part of the scene. I love that. So yeah. That's yeah. so brave giving an improviser your phone to read. I, ag- I agree. I agree. When people do it, I'm like, I'm such a hypocrite. Cause I'm like, I would never, I would never do this. But thank you for giving us your phone. I guess yeah. you have to pick a safe, a safe uh, text thread, or you just have to be one of those people that's like, whatever. You don't know these details. You can do it. Okay. I have it. one more additional 
question about that. Um, what is like one of the, the spiciest prompts you've taken from like that game? Like, have, you ever, have you gone like oh. from like you're like someone's breakup text mm. and you're like, oh god, mm -hmm. oh shit. Yeah, I think the best one, there has been one where someone's been like conspiring to break up. We haven't gotten like, ah, uh, it'd be so crazy if they gave us like their breakup. But we've definitely had one where it's like maybe uh, somebody was talking to their friend about their partner or whatever, someone they were dating and it got kind of like, yeah, got kind of juicy. And like, it's fun because it's like, you're still trying to justify the scene in another way too, because you're like improvising with someone who doesn't have the phone. So yeah. Um, it gets pretty silly, but yeah, I think we have gotten that for sure. But that nothing like, like that. scandalous. That'd be super awkward if your partner was in the audience. You like hand over your phone and you look like, oh so my anyway, God. this fucking bitch. That's the yeah. first time you read. Or if you're someone who texts a lot of detail, like if you're like Marissa Jones from my science class, and you know, but mm -hmm. usually texts are vague enough that that's also fun because you know, like it's assumed context. So that's always funny too. So uh, you can kind of fill in the blanks and make it more scandalous, but yeah. Well, I'm in a long distance relationship. So like 98% of my texts are just sex. So that would be. So your phone would be in like such a wild ride. That'd be... Yeah, I definitely feel like we should play this game with Nicole's phone. Yep. <laughs> that's a hard pass. <laughs> yeah, that's, oh, that's so fun, yeah. I mm -hmm. yeah, if someone gave us that thread, I'd be like, again, I'd be like, wow, I would I would not, but you you do that's cool. Mm -hmm. Well, well, we can put that open to anyone. Does anyone have any sex in their phone that they'd like to use as the basis for? If I can scream them, maybe. If you can scream, scream them. <laughs> no, that is not what I said. But yes. Yeah, would uh, that be a fun wrinkle? Is that we have to like scream the contents of these texts? Um, yeah, I'm into it. I uh, just scrolling up here. One of my texts says, "Suck my white ass, Schultz." So <laughs> that counts as a sex, right? That's yeah, really, that's the sexiest thing I've heard all day. <laughs> and what's awesome too is like your like the scene not being about sex is like even better because then yeah you're trying to justify yeah those kinds of texts or whatever mm -hmm. um yeah i feel like we have time to do a quick game before we pivot to our extremely long game so uh once again i imploring you katie to just put your like boot on our neck and just like scream at us really what activity we're going to do before we put you through the meat grinder mm, okay so you want to play a short form game like just a little something like that yeah, yeah okay. let's try to keep it less than less than three minutes okay cool let's play should have said so this one is just where we do a scene it's more about the short form game than the you know we, last time we kind of got into some some characters and things like that but we'll still try to establish who we are what we're doing where we are um but yeah it'll be a it can be a three-person scene and i'm gonna uh say your name and then i'll say should have said and what you do with that so if i'm say a line and i'm like let's go to the store and i'm like katie should have said then i have to try to find a totally different line to say um and it's way more fun if you find like a a very different line so instead of being like let's go to the store should have said let's go to the park, should have said. You could be like, let's go to the store, should have said. And then finding something totally different, like um, let's make out, you know what I mean? Like something that's gonna change the change the course of it. So it's definitely uh, to be on your toes too. So um, yeah, if you three- this is, Yeah, that's like Switch, right? Sort of, yeah. So Switch, um, is maybe that might maybe that's the same game called switch there's another game called switch where you switch characters but i feel yeah. like this is the game that we have played before where we just yell switch and you have to change what you say i feel like this is oh. open oh, oh uh, yeah i think we played I think it we're as, on the as a like drinking game or something like that though possibly yeah. well i mean no not okay, us cool. no no i think it was like uh it's 
we it was like almost a sociables rule or something like that. And well, like, let's do what Katie's saying. I just I feel I, yeah, I feel like sociables. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, it's just switch switching the line. Yeah, should have said switch the line. Totally. Cool. Awesome. Right, can you so, can you start? So I'm not sure I entirely grasp it. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, cool. Yeah, you too. And then let's get Paige to give you uh, and I'll watch the clock this time, Paige. I'm sorry. We will be we will be tight. Um, uh, if Paige yeah, can give us an object to start the scene off. Any object. But like a good one. Can it be a schlafenschwanz? A wedding what cake. That's amazing. Yeah, let's have let's let's go for it. Cool. Uh, hey, I'd like to return this wedding cake. What? What's wrong with it? I I, I make great cakes. I mean, I, I your reputation does precede you. You do make great cakes. This one in particular, I, I was just kind of wondering if maybe you were having an off day. What should have said. Oh, sorry. Kelly yeah, should have said. Um, it's it's just that honestly, the cake is great. I just realized I don't want to get married. Oh shit! Ding! <laughs> Damn! Damn! Dude, so, that's that's heavy. I, I know your wedding's today. Well, I mean, you're right, and that's why you're such a good baker, is you know the date of the wedding. It's on the cake. <laughs> that's that's right. Ian um, should have said. Uh, yes, I know many things. Should have things said. that may surprise you. Well, and that's also why you're a great uh, stockbroker too. And this is why I come to you for everything, including my emotions. Uh, I just I I don't have anyone to talk to ever since the janitor mysteriously got fired at work, and so I just I the cake is a metaphor. Do you understand? You don't need to say a single thing more. Okay. I know everything that you're. Should have said. You. Yep. <laughs> Should have said. Uh, is that your wife behind you? <laughs> Ding! Oh, well, not yet. <laughs> Honey, what are you doing here with our wedding cake? You said that you were going to get the decorations changed, and it it kind of sounds like you're trying to return it? Is it our wedding cake, Susan? I mean, it was supposed to be. You were supposed to be at the church an hour and a half ago. Nicole should have said. I mean, not anymore. I'm marrying your brother, Hans. Ding. I'm sorry, brother. <laughs> Your brother slash stockbroker's friend slash wedding cake maker, Hans. Yeah. It's things like this. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that was great. Nice. Brought it all back. That was awesome, you three. It's great. Mm. Yeah, nicely done, Ian. That way to introduce me into that scene. Yeah. Yeah. You'd, you'd be a good wife. To cheat on with your husband. <laughs> I get that right. a lot. <laughs> I think this game is really cool too because, like, without fail, when someone calls should have said, the like second or third thing you say is always like way juicier and way more interesting to the scene. Like, um, it kind of just shows you you can totally go there with the scene and it's like awesome, right? Like, you can totally yeah. be like, I'm get like, no, actually, I'm marrying your, you know, like, we're not getting married. It's like to kind of get yourself into trouble. It's, yeah, it's, I like that. I like that one. You, you did great. Thanks. You're an excellent coach. Oh, thank you. Should have said. <laughs> I... <laughs> Do you want to get married to Hans and I? <laughs> ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Off yeah, try it. <laughs> <laughs>